I'm now going to move on to the next line down, and I'm going to do this with the log jam product as well. Uh, also, just using it out of the uh, quart tube. It certainly can be applied with a chinking pump, and on wider lines like this, you'll, you'll absolutely find that that's a lot more efficient and quicker. But people may not have access to that, so I definitely wanted to show that even with the wider lines, it can be done with the quart tubes or even with a bulk loading handgun. But the process is, again, just trying to get it in there. And on these wider lines, the smoother and flatter that I can apply it, the easier it's going to be to trowel. With the bulk loading guns, frequently you can get different sizes of tips to make this a little bit easier. But I'm trying to be very careful in my application not to trap uh, air beneath the surface. That can create some problems with bubbling or blistering down the road. And I'm trying to make sure that I'm getting the proper depth as well as uh, trying to make it as flat and smooth as possible. This happens to be a fairly warm day, and as you can see, we're kind of in the direct sunlight, uh, which typically is still okay for the application of the chinking. Um, sometimes that can give us some issues with bubbling and blistering, uh, so be very careful. It's nice not to do it in the direct sunlight, but if you do, you certainly can only do smaller segments, and you need to make sure you keep it misted down better and quicker with water because it will tend to skin on the surface fairly quickly and need to keep that moist until we can do the tooling. Again, a lot of people will just use the foam covered brushes in order to do their troweling and this certainly can work well, especially if you don't use too much water. And I'm just using a super light touch with the brush almost parallel to the wall. So I'm just barely skimming over to do that. This can also be done with the use of trowels as well. And some people will prefer, even with the log jam, to do it with the trowels. There is no one right or wrong way. A lot of it is personal preference. I prefer with log jam because it is lighter and softer to use the foam brushes. And we can just come along smooth and tool that out. As soon as my brush starts to get dirty, I put it in a bucket of water so it can soak. I can clean it out later and reuse it. Again, the final step. Ideally, if we do it properly, there's going to be very little uh, cleanup that needs to be done. But what cleanup we do need to do usually can go fairly quickly just using the edge of a little foam sponge like this, kitchen sponge. Some areas you might have to scrub a little bit harder, especially if it's been sitting there for a little while because it doesn't take long in the hot sunshine like this for that to start to dry. This brings up another point I'd like to mention in terms of chinking and timing and so forth. Some people will like to apply the chinking prior to staining and finishing the logs. Uh, I typically don't like that myself. There's always going to be a little residual of the material that's going to have to be cleaned up some and the chinking material will get into the wood and sometimes create problems when you put the stain on. You'll see those runs and the, the residual in there. So ideally, I like to prep and finish the logs and then do the chinking and the caulking afterwards. You have, it's critically important that you use materials that are compatible. There's some stains that chinking won't stick to. So I always like to stick with uh, products that are made by the same company that I know is guaranteed to be compatible with each other. For this final line, I'm going to, going to apply that with the chinker's edge, again through the snorkeler pump. This is a little wider line, and I have a technique on some of these where I use that actually without a tip or with a round tip. And if I, am, if I were to hold this uh, so the material is being pushed straight towards the backer rod and hold it out, a quarter to three-eighths of an inch. Then as I move along, the material kind of spreads out top and bottom, and I can do a pretty efficient job of applying it in there. Again, the critical thing is making sure if you use this technique, you don't hold the tip too close so that you're not getting adequate depth. But the secret is, and it takes practice, being able to apply, regardless of what kind of tip you use, the material so it's the adequate depth, 
plus as flat as possible, and that aids in efficiency of tooling. Now that that has been applied, our options would be people can use just a foam brush to work it in. One of the complaints that I've heard from people that are trying to switch from log jam to chinker's edge and they, they run into difficulties because they're not used to having to put so much pressure. It can be done strictly with the foam brushes, but again, I find it to be quite a bit more efficient to uh, at least do the initial work with a trowel. Again, we want to be very careful not to put too much moisture on there. And because it's hot, I'm actually using a lot more water today than I normally would just because it's tending to try to skin over. But we can do this initial troweling, making sure that the edges are set, pushed up tight, top and bottom. One of the things I've found over the years is uh, I have always wanted to have the absolute perfect flat chink lines with just crisp, clear edges. And some people like that. But chinking is actually meant to look like the old mortar. So have, leaving a few trowel lines, sometimes people like that effect, a little more rustic. But once that's initially set, we can come back, if we want the nice smooth lines, do just kind of a final quick brush over with the foam brushes. The other thing that's slightly different on the two products, the Chinker's Edge, again, being a little thicker, allows you to use the trowel more efficiently, but it's also got a slightly different texture in it, a little bit more texture that gives it uh, a bit of a sanded, more of a sanded look, uh, more closely imitating real mortar. So those are the primary things. Both of these products function really, really well. Done properly, put with the adequate depth, they both will uh, last a long, long time. It's very critical on log homes in summary to make sure all of the various steps that we use are done properly. Beginning with the initial prep of the logs, getting them clean down to good solid bare wood, applying the stain properly, flooding it on, brushing it in as deeply as possible, and getting a real good protective finish. From there, moving back on to applying the chinking, the caulking, the sealants. Those are all very critical steps in order for this home to be easily maintained over the years and to give the homeowner the satisfaction that they're expecting. Problem free without having cold drafts, bugs, a lot of problems with maintenance and stain failures. Done right, log homes can be wonderful and they don't have to be difficult to maintain or create problems.